do a few um, housekeeping things to start off with. Um, so just to check that everyone can hear me first of all, um, there should be a raise hand icon um, in your uh, icon bar there. Um, if you can click on that now, um, just to let me know you can hear, that'd be great. Okay, looks like most people are able to do that um, and hear me. Um, I'll just put a little post um, in the chat as well. So if you are um, experiencing any problems with the audio during the session, the first thing to do is just to try logging out of the session and then back in. Um, and that will usually fix uh, most problems as well. Um, we'll probably have a few uh, bleeps here and there at the beginning of the session. That's uh, people logging in um, and out of the session. Um, unfortunately, there's uh, nothing I can do about that. Um, I'll lower the hands now as well. Um, the session is being recorded, um, so a recording will be made available on the Pearson Music community pages um, probably early next week um, and uh, along with the slides as well. Um, slides can be downloaded from the materials section um, in this app as well. Um, so if you want to copy of those, um, you can access them as well. Um, so uh, let's uh, get going. Um, it's down for an hour, um, but we'll see how we go with getting through everything um, where it's uh, a Friday afternoon. So we'll see uh, how we go, but uh, also um, however many questions you want to ask as well. Um, so if you do have any questions, uh, pop them in the chat window. There will be, hopefully be time at the end of the session for those as well. So um, the idea is just to give an overview of uh, where we are now, so um, the timeline of, of what happened. Um, go through the consultation, the main points of the consultation outcomes uh, that were issued yesterday. Um, obviously look at the types of evidence that you might want to consider um, when you're looking at the teacher assessed grade um, that you'll come up with. Um, there are a few things that are still to be confirmed, so just to detail those as well. Um, and then just to really go through what, what you can get on with now and, and what your uh, students can uh, be getting on with as well. So, um, obviously, uh, Secretary of State made the announcement on the 6th of January uh, that schools would be closed um, and that the GCSEs and A-level exams wouldn't go ahead as planned this summer. Um, that followed, uh, there was uh, then letters that followed um, on 13th of January between DfE and Ofqual um, to outline the process um, and to agree the alternative arrangements um, for the exams in 2021. Um, the consultation uh, was then released on the 15th um, of January and ran until the 29th. Um, closed and then we got the outcomes uh, from the consultation um, released yesterday as well. Um, there was also a notice uh, from JTQ um, released about um, NEA as well um, and that, that uh, could be completed outside of the centre um, and there wouldn't be the, the usual restrictions um, in place and in terms of the supervision um, and things like that. Um, someone's just having uh, some problems seeing the slides. Um, I'll just try that again. Hopefully uh, you should see them. Uh, not sure why that wasn't coming up. Um, hopefully uh, the slides can be seen now. Okay, okay let's try that again. Uh, completely blank people are saying.
So, ah, there we go. It seems to be working now. Um, not sure what all the problems were there um, or why that, why that was causing any issues. Um, so, uh, yes, yeah, so JCQ um, released the notice um, around uh, NEA um, and uh, that could uh, be uh, completed outside of the center, um, but obviously um, uh, there may be some problems with students uh, completing that depending on access to resources and uh, so forth. Um, then, as I said, the outcomes of the off court uh, consultation were released on uh, 25th of Feb, um, and there is a link there. Um, as I said, there are some things still to be confirmed, and there is a further consultation um, that was released yesterday as well um, uh, around the uh, alternative arrangements for the awarding. Um, and the framework that that will be based on. Um, that closes on the 11th of March um, at 11.45, um, and that is open for comment. Um, and there is a link there on the slides um, for um, uh, that consultation as well. So the main thing is um, to look at the consultation outcome. Um, so, uh, there would be uh, teacher assessed grades um, this summer. Um, the teachers uh, must assess their students' performance only on uh, what content has been delivered to them uh, by their teacher to determine the grade. Um, so, obviously, that's taking into account that it's uh, various different situations for different centres and in terms of the content that. Um, has been delivered and will be delivered this year um, and it's not always been possible to deliver all of that content um, for all the qualifications. Um, that teachers can use um, evidence of a student's performance from throughout the course um, so um, you can um, bring in lots of different evidence from various different uh, sources and, and throughout their time on the course uh, to, to determine uh, the grade that you give to students. Um, and teachers should determine the grades as late in the academic year as practically possible. Um, and that is to enable teaching to continue um, as late in the year as possible as well. Um, as I said, there's broad range of evidence um, across the taught content to determine the grade should be used as well. Um, and then uh, head to centre will have to confirm that students have been taught sufficient content to allow progression. Um, so um, there will be some declarations um, uh, made by centres when they are submitting the grades and part of that will be from the head of centre as well. Uh, important thing um, that uh, probably impacts on uh, music technology uh, most is that students should continue with uh, NEA work um, if possible. Um, and this will be marked by teachers um, using the published marking grids um, in the specification um, and it will contribute to the overall grade. But um, exam boards won't be required to moderate it. Um, so you will be using uh, the marking grids to mark NEA work if that has been completed or if it's partially completed. Um, and that should contribute to the overall grade uh, that you are for the teacher assessed grade there. Um, and you would weigh that up um, broadly in terms of the, the same sort of percentage that um, the NEA would usually contribute um, as well. Um, and the other thing uh, that's uh, come out in the consultation is that it should be no easier or harder to achieve a particular grade uh, compared to any previous years as well. Um, 
There is uh, lots of talk around uh, the support that exam boards will provide um, for um, uh, for teachers and centres when they're coming up with their teacher assess assessed grade as well. Um, and there, it said uh, the consultation outcome said that there will be um, exam boards will provide a package of support materials, um, and that could include um, questions. Um, mark schemes, uh, data around the performance uh, by students on those uh, questions, and also exemplar material. Um, I, I comes on to it later, but uh, what that will look like and how that's presented is still to be decided, and, and um, that's part of something that uh, there's going to be uh, negotiations between all the awarding organisations um, on this type of thing as well. Um, although obviously Pearson are the only uh, awarding organisation to offer A-level music technology, um, the general uh, sort of um, processes and how that will be presented uh, will need to be uh, talked about and looked at. Um, and teachers will be able to use that support material um, up until the deadline for the submission of grades. Um, and uh, the other important thing is that the use of the support materials isn't compulsory. Um, so I think when the consultation came out, um, there was particular talk around that there potentially could be mandatory uh, tests or questions or um, some sort of papers um, that could be sat by students to help with the grades. Um, that's the outcome is saying that uh, the support materials and the questions that are published by exam boards won't be compulsory, um, but uh, they were part of a range of evidence that teachers could use to determine the grade there. Um, someone's just asked about will example mixes be provided for grade bands uh, for component one? Um, obviously, that's something that needs to be looked at of what we can provide um, in, in terms of uh, the, the resources and the support material around that. And that's going to vary slightly for each uh, qualification that we offer at Pearson. Um, and I think particularly at Music Tech, um, we need to look at um, how we can provide and what um, resources we can provide for each component there um, and that is something that still needs to be decided um, and yes yeah, someone's asked a, a very similar question about support materials include exemplar recording task mix um, similar to component form mixes so yeah that's that's something that we do need to look at of uh, what we can provide in that way um, teachers must assess their students' performance only on what content has been delivered to them to determine the grade. When does the delivery period end? We would start revision at some point. Should we keep teaching for longer? Um, so I think the intention from DfE and Ofqual is that teaching should continue as late as possible in the year um, to go through the content and and allow learners to experience that, uh, the the content and the and the delivery of that, and have that skills and knowledge. Um, but when that actually ends, there isn't a, a specific date set, um, but there obviously will be a deadline for when grades need to be submitted, and that's something that you will have to consider um, in the centre. Uh, at what point do we submit? Uh, CAG, well, uh, it's going to be termed, I think, more of a tag this year. Uh, so the teacher assessed grade. Um, that is looking like it will be in early June. Um, uh, although I can't remember the exact date off the top of my head at the moment with that. Um, okay. So. Um, the exam boards will work together as far as possible uh, to ensure consistency um, for the internal and external quality assurance processes. 
Um, so these are some of the things that still need to be decided um, around uh, the, the quality assurance side of things. And that's part of the uh, framework uh, that's uh, coming out as well. Um, so the center's internal quality arrangements uh, will include consideration of the center's uh, profile of results in previous years. Um, then exam boards will put in place um, external quality assurance checks um, and use a sample uh, and use a sample of centres to review the evidence for uh, one or more subjects as well. And then the results will only be uh, processed after uh, any external quality assurance process has been confirmed. And also, as I said, there will be a head of centre um, declaration uh, that will be required with uh, the submissions there as well. And then uh, there will be uh, students will be able to appeal their grade. Um, and at first, the first thing that they would do would be to ask their centre um, to check if there's a procedure or admin error. Um, been made with their um, with their grade. If there isn't an error identified, um, then a centre could submit a revised grade uh, along with a rationale um, submitted to the exam board um, and uh, ask that to be considered. <coughs> um, if that's accepted, then a revised grade would be issued. Um, and um, a student can ask the centre to appeal uh, to the exam board on their behalf as well. Um, and the centre will then submit the student's appeal, um, provide the evidence on which the judgment has been made to the exam board, and then that will be reviewed um, and a, a decision would be made on that as well. Um, someone's asked about uh, do we need to keep copy of all the evidence we use to inform tags in case of checks? Uh, yeah, I would certainly be keeping records of the evidence used um, for uh, coming up with the teacher assessment grade. Um, I believe in uh, the DFE uh, notice that came out, um, it does suggest that um, you should share the types of evidence that were used to determine the teacher assess grade with students. Um, but uh, from reading things, although not said explicitly, uh, the grade shouldn't be shared before results day. So the results day as well for A-level um, will be the 10th of August. Um, so are our marks enough or do we need uh, the work itself? Um, I would suggest keeping uh, copies of work um, just in case of any appeals um, that, that could potentially happen um, as that could form part of the evidence that um, is submitted um, on, on the, your behalf and, and uh, the student could request that to be submitted as well. Um, so, um, as it said, uh, there's a broad range of evidence uh, that you uh, could potentially consider um, to submit uh, um, when you submit your teacher assessed grades. Um, and that could be things such as uh, the student work produced in response to assessment materials uh, provided by the exam board. Um, as it said, that could include uh, groups of questions, past papers, um, or practice papers or sample papers. Um, so if you've uh, done mock exams, for example, um, that could be something uh, that could be taken into consideration as well um, in there. Um, then there's also the NEA work, um, even if this hasn't been fully completed, it can still inform uh, the teacher assessed grade um, and um, you would mark that 
and, and look at that along the um, publish mark scheme um, in the specification to consider how that would would normally perform against the the marks there um, you could also consider student work produced uh, in center devised tasks that reflect uh, the specification um, so that would follow a similar format to the exam board materials um, and it's also suggested this could include uh, substantial class or homework um, and that could include things that were done during remote learning as well um, so things like internal tests taken by uh, students as well um, then you can consider things such as uh, records of students capability and performance over the course of study um, and also records of students progress um, over the course of study as well uh, so someone just asking is there going to be any more mock type exam questions for a2 level so historically isn't that many past papers available um, that's something again still need to be confirmed um, because initially it was uh, seeming like that the only material that we could potentially make available would be past papers where there were standardized mark schemes um, and uh, the historical data about performance around that um, but from the letter uh, from Gavin Williamson um, the other day it did suggest that there should be um, some unfamiliar questions as well for each qualification. So uh, that is something that we do need to look at um, and what question, what types of questions might be available as well and, and what that would relate to. Um, so based on the comments that it can be from during lockdown things don't need to have been set in exam conditions um, no um, so uh, things don't have to be done under exam conditions but you might want to consider um, the way that they have been uh, completed in terms of the weight that you put on them in terms of influencing uh, the grade uh, that you decide on uh, can this year's planned papers for ASA2 be shared with centres? Um, again, that's something that uh, does need to be looked at um, and the papers may form uh, some of these un unfamiliar questions um, that, uh, that do get published. So that's something that we just need to look at um, in there. Struggling a bit with how to assess incomplete component one work given how much the mark scheme relies on the finished product uh, because where it could have got to would feature in our judgment on this uh, but these grades are meant to be based on evidence I suppose the same applies to compositions do you have any suggestions or advice um, <clears throat> there is um, going to be further guidance on um, uh, coming out around components where it's not been possible to complete uh, meaningful evidence um, so there will be some further guidance coming out around that so that may well help in these uh, circumstances where uh, it's it's difficult to decide on the grade and uh, and the marks for something that's incomplete for the recording for example um, so um, I don't know how specific that guidance will be for music tech exactly um, and uh, how that will uh, work in terms of that but I know that that is something that is is going to be coming as well um, if the students complete their own recording composition projects at home out of lesson times can this be used for evidence as we wouldn't be able to know whether parts have been copied from samples etc um, again if that's part of the work they're doing towards the course um, 
in terms of its projects that you're setting them as well where they are working on things then you could consider that but again the weight that you put on that depending on how that work has been completed um, you might want to consider that as well um, and and this is the part that kind of says that as well where centers should bear in mind the following factors um, in deciding how to balance different sources of evidence um, when the evidence was produced so when in the course uh, was that evidence produced? Was it early on in the course? Uh, was it fairly recently? Um, so how much does that reflect their current ability? Um, what students were asked to do? Um, so um, that may well be uh, uh, something uh, along the lines of was it a, a, a mock exam from a, a past paper or was it um, you know some questions that were devised by the centre um, and then how that evidence was produced you know was it done under exam conditions um, or was it something something that was completed for homework done outside of the centre um, as well so those sorts of things um, will need to be considered when you are coming up with the, the teacher assessed grade there as well um, as I said, there are still some things to be confirmed. Um, so the quality assurance processes um, will be coming out and, and be confirmed. Um, as I said, there is the um, uh, the consultation um, that runs to the 11th of March, which will uh, is a draft framework at the moment and gives some draft guidance um, around um, the evidence to consider and how to consider that which is uh, what those previous slides were taken from as well um, I said the exact content of the support material and how this will be uh, available still got to be confirmed and then um, which are another point that I've already mentioned as well is how to approach any a components if no meaningful evidence uh, is available there um, and the final thing that still needs to be confirmed, which I think uh, will be coming out um, hopefully early next week, um, because the consultation left this open for awarding organisations to decide, was if uh, UK based, uh, so GCSEs and A levels, uh, will go ahead for international centres. Um, so that's not. IGCSEs or I, I, uh, international A-levels, that is the UK-based GCSEs and A-levels uh, that uh, international centres uh, sit, so music technology would be one of those, um, and that will hopefully be confirmed early next week. Um, just having a quick look at a uh, comment that's come in. Might it be best for us to internally change the length of the something like the recording task composition in order to try and get something shorter that is uh, actually more complete? Um, I think from uh, what's been suggested, you should be aiming to complete the tasks that were issued uh, for this academic year um, as they were with the changes uh, that were put in place. Um, there should be no further amendments to the to the requirements of tasks um, at this point. So really what to do for now is um, continue to deliver content for the exam components. Um, it's clear message coming from DfE um, and Ofqual that teaching should continue um, to allow the grades to be submitted as late in the year as possible um, and so that uh, you have as broad an evidence base as possible to base those teacher assessed grades upon as well um, and the content uh, that is delivered to the students has been as much as possible. Um, you need to consider uh, if you'll use some of the support material provided to help inform the grade um, obviously, um, there will be uh, some questions um, that will 
be provided in that support material. There's also talk of at least alternate uh, grade descriptors um, coming to help with the decisions um, that centres are making around the teacher assessed grades as well. Um, students should continue with NEA where this is possible. Um, obviously, we've got the JCQ notice that allows this to continue outside of the centre and the normal supervised conditions. Um, but uh, for music and music technology, I think the access to resources may prevent this happening, um, depending on what your learners um, have access to and, and what they can do. Um, and then you'll have to consider when you mark the NEA uh, components to help inform the grades, um, because obviously you've, you will have a timeline of when you need to submit um, grades, um, maybe um, that will be slightly earlier to your centre uh, so that uh, the quality assurance processes can uh, go through um, before um, they are submitted to the exam board as well. So there may be some slightly earlier dates um, in place. Um, also, as I said about the uh, consultation that's currently ongoing around the framework, um, there's a link there to it. Uh, so please read and uh, respond to that consultation um, if you if you would like to. Um, there are some other draft documents on that page as well um, around guidance for um, the evidence to consider and making objective decisions as well. So those are draft documents at the moment. They're quite similar to documents that were released um, last year as well. Um, but uh, please do review and comment on that as well. Um, so here is um, a slide which uh, is a link to uh, the contact page on uh, if you do have any questions after this session as well. Um, so you can submit that through the uh, customer portal. Um, and there is a link to the uh, Pearson Music community page as well, um, where I will post a recording of the session and the slides as well um, early next week. Um, but uh, really at this point, um, we've technically got around about uh, just under half an hour left uh, if necessary but if you do have any questions now um, I'm happy to answer as as best I can um, hopefully uh, that's given you a bit of an idea around what to expect over the next coming weeks um, and, and months uh, there's obviously some things that still need to be confirmed and we'll be confirming that as soon as possible and getting that information out there. Um, so if you do have any questions now, um, please put them in the chat and I'm happy to answer anything. Um, if not, um, I hope you found the session useful um, and uh, I hope you have a, a good weekend as well.
so uh, Heather has asked uh, demands to correct that uh, music tech exams may still go ahead in June. So uh, for UK centres, certainly not. Um, the outcome of the off-qual consultation has left it up to awarding organisations organizations to decide what may happen for international centers um, and I think we will be confirming the position for Pearson um, early next week what may happen in, in those cases um, but uh, yes yeah, certainly UK centers um, there will be no exams um, in the summer um, so just confirm that 